Just a snapshot of what's going on back at my company now. They're still working uh, uh, a system that can fly the public on suborbital flights. And uh, it's about to do its first rocket testing. If this works to where the suborbital industry is extremely profitable, which we think it will be, it'll, it might uh, lure investment. And that investment could be used for research to provide the breakthroughs so that we could get enough safety and affordability of orbital uh, flights that we can do things like uh, go to these kind of places for our uh, vacation in orbit. Now, is what is going on there with Richard Branson's program, it's been criticized that, well, this is just joy rides for millionaires or billionaires, okay? It could be millionaires, right? Uh, I used to be worried about that until I realized, well, wait a minute. How many here bought a, uh, a Apple II computer in 1978 like I did? Uh, it wasn't the, it wasn't the uh, bank's computer or Lockheed's computer. It was, uh, what was it for? Why did we get 32K and then quickly 48 and faster speed? It, it would run Frogger better, right? <laughs> Uh, so we had a full decade of littering our homes with things that were just fun for games, really. And then, luckily, uh, Al Gore came along and he created the internet. <laughs> and we couldn't have had the internet unless we had had 10 years of filling our homes with, with uh, computers, could we? So that's the way I look at this suborbital thing. Yeah, there's going to be millionaires having a lot of fun with joy rides, but I think in a, within 10 years, somebody will figure out why we're doing it and what we can do with it. I believe that the enablers, the most of the technologies that you see right now are that we say these are our latest technology. I believe most of them are just enablers uh, to be able to do some really good stuff that can inspire our use in the future. 